Welcome to Write Your Book in a Flash with Dan Janelle, the only podcast where you'll learn how successful people just like you have grown their businesses, expanded their influence, and made more money by writing a book. On each episode, you'll learn the inside secrets to help you create a book that can serve as a powerful marketing tool to skyrocket your business. I'm your host, Dan Janelle. I help thought leaders, business executives, and entrepreneurs write their books. To find out more, go to writeyourbookinaflash.com. Welcome, everyone. I'm delighted to welcome our guest today, Mary Kate Gullick. How are you? I'm doing great, Dan. How are you? Great. Mary Kate, why don't you tell us your story? How did you get here? Sure. You know, I spent the last 20 years working for advertising agencies and in the marketing departments of Fortune 500 companies. I was at IBM for a while. I was at TD Ameritrade for a while. And it was really fun and I enjoyed it. I know a lot about marketing. I've been doing content marketing since before it had a name, really. And um, so at the end of, in 2019, it was announced that TD Ameritrade, my company was being bought by Charles Schwab, which I was all, everybody was all like, oh no. But then after a minute, I'm like, Hey, I know what happens with this. I'm going to get a lot of money and then I can go do what I want to do. So that sounds okay. So I started my own business and I said to myself, huh, you know what? You know an awful lot about marketing. You've got a master's degree in it. You've been doing it for 20 years. You win all kinds of awards. You've been helping me, people make all kinds of money. I bet that there are a lot of people who need your help. So I started looking around and I started seeing the kind of people who were helping coaches and consultants and experts to kind of build their businesses, build their brands, build their content. And I got to tell you, I was super grossed out. Um, the advice that they were giving was not good advice. It was non-expert advice. It was very much, and forgive me for saying so, somebody woke up one morning and decided they wanted to make a lot of money. So they took an Instagram class and then started calling themselves a marketing coach. Um, and the market is clogged with them. There are a whole lot of fake gurus out there. So looking at that, I decided that there are so many people out there with what I call real deal expertise, people who have gone through the education, the certifications, who have a big corporate career, or clinical career, and they have all of this knowledge. And when they want to go out and start their own business, they just don't know how to put their thoughts out into the world in a way that people are going to see them, how to become um, thought leaders in the industry, how to become the go-to expert. So I started working with people like that, people like me, really, and showing them how to do that. So that is how the birth of Real Deal Content Coaching came to be. Fantastic. That's a great story. And uh, just in case people didn't re realize that, the name of your book is called The Real Deal, and it's getting great reviews on Amazon, and that's fantastic. I want to go back to a couple of things you talked about. Uh, number one, you said there are a lot of fake gurus out there. Tell yeah. us what you mean by a fake guru and a real deal guru. What's the difference? You know, the difference between a fake guru and a real deal expert is really partially their intent and, um, and what they actually know, right? So a fake guru has one goal and that goal is to cha-ching, you know, it's to bring in money based on what people need, not based on what they themselves know. These are the people you will often hear who say, you don't need to really know your area of expertise. You just need to be one or two steps ahead of the people you're teaching, mm -hmm. which when I hear that, I get all like my shoulders go up to my ears because I'm just like, ew. Um, no, you should be able to grow with the people that you're working with. You should know enough to take them from beginning level to expert. You know, they should be able to ask you anything and you should be able to you know, find answers for them. So that's one thing is the intent. And the other is the idea of having that depth of expertise. And you know, as well as I do, Dan, deep expertise comes from experience. It doesn't come from taking a lot of, um, a couple online courses. It comes from doing the thing over and over and over again under different circumstances and seeing how how things change given those circumstances. So um, a fake guru is there for one reason and one reason only, and it's to take your money because they're one or two steps ahead of you. If you know nothing about social media and they know two things about social media, then they can charge you for what they know. Um, but the truth is, if you want a content strategy or a marketing strategy, you should work with somebody who knows more than two things about social media. You should work with somebody who knows a lot about marketing and a lot about how to create a rounded strategy for you so that you're 
getting the kind of exposure that you need. Um, that's what a real deal expert is. I mean, a lot of these folks who are coming out of the corporate world and say, you know what? I want my life to look different than this. I know a lot and I've been a superstar in this, you know, in this job forever. I've risen through the ranks and I have pretty much done it all. Um, now I want to share that expertise with other people. They're doing okay. They're really doing it for fulfillment. I mean, sure, they want to make money and there's nothing wrong with that. You should be paid for what you know. Um, but their goal is really to expand themselves um, and to and to serve. And those folks are real deal expert. The depth of what they know cannot be measured. And it also can't be captured in just a couple Instagram reels. You know, they require a different avenue to share, um, to share the profundity of what it is they know. And that's why I like books so much for those people. Fantastic. You know, I can't tell you how many seminars I've been to where I heard people exactly say what you just said. Oh, you all just need to read a dummy's book and, and you'll be one step ahead of them. And then you just shake them upside down until the quarters come packing, come rolling out of their pockets. Yes, sir. And then, oh, just make my skin crawl. So doesn't it gross you out? I just oh. can't. Ugh. A, what's even grosser is that people line up like, like lemmings running to the back of the room, giving them thousands and thousands of dollars and they're going to get garbage. In fact, I know someone who went to one of those guys, $25,000 sessions, and they basically try to upsell you on everything along the way. It was really, really, really gross. And uh, the information marketing industry is full of people like that. So it's really, really nice to meet someone like you, who is the real deal, who works for real companies doing real marketing. And uh, that's fantastic. So tell us, uh, you mentioned um, that there's a lot of not good advice out there. Can you give us some uh, ideas of what people are being told to do that frankly just does not work? Yes, a couple of things. Some of my favorites are you, you should be on all social media platforms. You just, you need to be everywhere because you never know where your customer is going to be. Well, that is a recipe for disaster and burnout. When you're starting to build your own consultancy business or your own coaching business, good word. You have enough to do without worrying about optimizing for five different platforms. You pick one. You pick the one that your ideal client is most likely on, and that's where you spend your time until you build an audience, until you find your people and talk to them, right? Until you nail down your message, and then you consider expanding when it makes strategic sense. You don't need to be everywhere for the sake of being everywhere. My other favorite piece of just god-awful advice is don't write long things because nobody reads. Any blog post that you do should be 50, you know, 500 words max. And all evidence points to the contrary. Still, the best performing blog posts are above 2,000 words. If people are interested in it, if they are your ideal client, they will read it if what you are writing is of interest to them. Um, and the same goes we hear about people with, and I'm going to use quotey fingers here because I hate the term lead magnet. Um, that's another term that skeeves me out because it's this idea that the people that you want to work with, that you want to serve are nothing more than a lead. And your job is to attract that object to you. Um, and that your lead magnet shouldn't be very long. It should be just a couple of quick tips and very consumable. Um, and all you're giving them is fluff. If the goal is just to give them something that costs you the least amount of effort to create, when they read it, they don't get any sense that you have any depth to what you know. All they know is that you've flung like seven tips for, um, for stringing a basket together. Um, and they don't know that you're actually one of the foremost basket stringing experts in the world. You know, if, if you want them to understand that you are the go-to, you have to showcase depth. And you can't showcase depth simply by throwing little bits at people. Um, there is a place for bits. Bits have a purpose. They're to act as breadcrumbs, right? To bring people to your deeper work. So that's why I always encourage people to start with the deeper work. Um, one, it shows immutably that you have enough expertise to create something significant. Um, and two, you can use that significant work to then break down into all those little breadcrumbs so you're not constantly having to create new things um, for social media, for your website, for your blog, 
for your podcast, for your YouTube channel, whatever. Um, if you have something like a book or a significant original research report, you can just use what you've created there to populate the rest of your digital ecosystem. Um, and doing that in a systematic way is a hell of a lot easier than constantly creating new, new, new things. Fantastic. You know, uh, our audience are basically speakers, coaches, consultants, you know, people who are really smart, people of real depth. So you're, I know you're speaking directly to them now. We talked about some things they shouldn't be doing. What should they be doing? Great question. Um, the first thing, start big instead of small, right? What is the the big thing that you can create that kind of houses your expertise and proves out your depth? Um, Dan knows the answer to that. It's a book. I love a book too. Um, and that's a really fantastic thing. But take that idea of having something big and breaking it into small pieces and apply it everywhere when it comes to your content creation. Don't create anything without plans for the 15 different ways that you're going to reuse it. That keeps you from having to create over and over and over again. So if you have, you know, if you have a, a YouTube channel and you're going to create a tutorial video there, what else are you going to do with that tutorial video? Are you going to post a little bit of it in your LinkedIn if that's your primary audience, or if you're going to be going live on Instagram or Facebook, because if that's where your following is, well, take that live, transcribe it, turn it into a blog post, take quotes from that, use that as little um, little social graphics that you can then share with the world. Um, turn your blog post into a LinkedIn article, just copy and paste that bad boy, because if you link off of LinkedIn, they'll be mad at you. You know, there are a million ways to use any one piece that you create. So take the three minutes required to think through, huh, if I'm going through the trouble of creating this one thing, what else can I get out of it? Squeeze the last bit of goodness out of everything that you make. <laughs> I love that, love that. Um, cool. Uh, what, did, what other advice would you have for thought leaders beyond the book? I mean, there's, there's books, there's podcasts, there's articles, there's videos, there's, there's so much. I'm sure anyone would just throw up their hands and say, where do I start? Uh, even with these 15 ideas. Um, where, where's the 80, 20 rule in all of this? Where will you get your most bang for your buck? That's a fabulous question. And the answer in, in my mind that the, the one thing, there are a million strategies that will get you to where you want to go. The only way that you won't is if you try to chase more than one of them at a time. So <laughs> the advice that I give is extremely simple, but it's not easy. And that is to, uh, Choose your content strategy, choose the platform that you're going to focus on and focus on it. Don't do a million other things. Don't start a podcast while you're writing your book. Don't start a YouTube channel while you're trying to build your Instagram following. Um, take one thing and write it until you can't anymore. If you can determine after a course of a quarter that it's legit not working, then leave it alone and switch to something else. But, um, you know, the old, the old adage, if you're trying to cross a river and you have resources and people to build a bridge, put them all on building one bridge, because that's the fastest way to cross a river. If you spread them out and try to build four bridges, it's going to be a while before you get there. Mm -hmm. Um, so focus on one bridge only. That means one, one major content project at a time. Cool. As we wrap up here, why don't you tell us who your ideal client is and how they can get in touch with you? Sure. I mean, my favorite people to work with are folks who have had a nice, long corporate clinical or academic career who are ready to, to coach or consult. And they say, you know what? I know more about this. This is my nerd zone. And I know more about it than anybody in the world. But you know what I don't know? I don't know how to package it up and create um, a presence around it outside of my corporate context. So that's what I like to help them do is to take all that goodness that's in their brain and um, get them known for it outside the world they're coming from and get them known for it with the people that they actually want to work with. And what is your website so people can contact you? It is marykategulick.com, M-A-R-Y-K-A-T-E-G-U-L-I-C-K. -E Great. Thank you for being with us today. It was my pleasure, Dan. Thanks for having me. Thank you for listening to the Write Your Book in a Flash podcast with Dan Janelle the only podcast that shows you exactly how people just like you have built their businesses by writing a book. If you'd like to write your book but don't know where to start, you can find great information at writeyourbookinaflash.com. If you're ready to take 
your next step to write the book that can transform your business, I invite you to schedule a free, no obligation consulting call with me by going to writeyourbookinaflash.com. We'll be back next week with another insightful interview to help you become a top business leader.